Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Seth here with a video here today with a brand new video on basically how to make your designs pop. Basically give you guys some really cool tips and ideas to bring into Photoshop in your next projects. Definitely beginner friendly, but I think there's just really cool things to at least know about uh, to kind of make your designs look a little bit better. The, I think the word make it pop is like really cringe and unfortunate, but hey, so hopefully you pop in this video. These can at least help you some way, one or another. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. So enjoy the video. And also there could be way more videos coming in the future. Uh, you, hopefully you guys are, if you're not subbed yet, it's a definite perfect time to do so. Give me a chance. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video and I love you guys. Also enjoy the new intro. All right, so for the first thing to make things pop, it's camera raw filter. You might find yourself in a scenario where these soft like facial features or like dark clothing need a bit of help to be seen. So then you guys can basically start off by flirting around with the shadows and highlights to get more clothing engaged in the photo. You can then move into texture or clarity to bring more of an aggressive, sharper look into your photos, which happens to be one of my favorite things to do and a bit of a signature touch I like to put on my photos. Do not be afraid as well to hop into hue, saturation, luminance, adjustments, and make certain colors stand out a bit more to grab attention. For me, I think if you aren't even opening up camera filter every time you have people in your designs, you're doing something wrong. Like how else are you guys actually color correcting your photos? The next idea is very simple gradients. Now what I actually mean by simple gradients is, sometimes that one tone background color lands a little bit boring in the eyes of the viewer that you're presenting it to. So what I actually recommend is choose the same color, then move your saturation scale a little bit up or a little bit down depending how you guys are feeling. However, take a big soft brush, then select somewhere around the canvas, whether if it's in the middle or in the bottom portion. You can then lower the opacity if it's a little bit too much, but just that brush hit itself, it can be used as a highlight to bring attention to whatever you guys put in front of it. So whether or not if you do it last or first, putting a little bit of depth in the actual background itself can really help a design pop. Now, speaking of brush hits, let's say you guys have a high pigmented or saturated color for your text, and you guys just need that little bit of something. What I would do is pick the same color on the color picker and make the saturation a little bit darker than the original selection. Now, with a soft brush, select on top of the text and change the blend mode to linear dodge add or screen or whatever you guys think looks best. Of course, then lower the opacity if needed. If you guys did not use a dark enough color, it would be a little bit too bright. But just that addition adds a little bit of pop to the text that you might be worrying about that just feels a little bit too boring. Up next on making things pop is texture. I literally cannot stress this enough. It's probably the only one on this list that most beginner designers explore. However, some beginners do not understand the idea of toning it down a bit. Lowering the opacity or using various little textures can be that thing that makes things go from flat to having a little bit of visual depth. So if that's taking a grunge texture itself, putting on an overlay or soft light and lowering the opacity, that's a good call. However, I would really recommend the beginners as well to use blend if option in the layer styles, but it basically acts as an opacity to darker colors or lighter colors. So if you guys actually find yourself in a scenario where the texture on overlay or linear dodge out, whatever you guys use is just not working for you, blend if is probably the option you guys can use. However, when all else fails, just use noise like the rest of us. Now, this next one is actually very situational, but it honestly hits if you guys want things to pop. And that's actually having a color scheme using white or black and having one or very minimal things in color. It can really easily help things stand out and pop off on the canvas. Honestly, using a lot of sports design, if you ever notice the background or even maybe the player itself is in black and white and the jersey is in full color. And that's done because it quickly lends a view of the main subject, some context, and possibly the objective of what you want to be seen first as well. It's honestly used quite a lot, but if you find a situation to use it, give it a shot. Now for this last one, we are talking fonts. Okay, so I don't know about you guys out there who only believe in those sans serif fonts. Not only that, but using the thin and fragile looking ones. But let me just say the weight and the height and the vibe of your font matters to the idea of being bold and having that design actually pop. A font like this is kind of just like, just boring, you know? Now compared to this guy and you have a very overlooked thing in design sometimes, and that's your type choice. With literally nothing else on the canvas, you can really tell the design stance is going to be very bold and fresh. Please, I am begging guys, do not overlook fonts. Also, if you guys want to head over to something like Adobe fonts or Google fonts, they have options to actually search for vertically tall fonts with options like weight and X height. And of course, a very bold weight and a very tall X height can really help lend itself to the idea of making things pop. I genuinely recommend you guys to search through these and make it a little easier for yourself. Now, I know I said that's my last one, but I want to add a really quick rapid fire round of some other tips to also consider. One being bigger subjects. 
Sometimes the subject or person in your photo can be used to fill more space in your design and also kind of help in the stress of how you actually fill the space. Two, particle effects, where if you guys type in on Google particle PNGs, or if you want to consider some other small hand drawn or photo effects, it's a really easy way to break down a smooth background that needs something to help the design. Three, very simple layer style text effects. One of my favorites actually being, if you want to add just a little something to a text, I'll actually go ahead and use an inner shadow on zero stroke, zero size, and move the distance to two or three, and select a highlight color to add just a little bit of something. And last rapid fire tip would be noise. I know I said it before, but I mean, guys, seriously, it's like if there was like an NFT group for noise, I'd be in that. And so would like a hundred billion other people, just for the record, if you don't want to listen, you don't have to, but just saying, like if you want to use noise, use it, just join the group. You know, that's what I'm saying. All right, guys, that is the end of the video here today. So hope you guys enjoy. You can bring these into Photoshop. Just some really cool, fun little tips. And hopefully, uh, if, you, if you have any other ideas, you can also kind of like think of, put in the comments below. We can learn from it together and just like, just have like a little fun little session. So don't forget to sub, don't forget to like. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys very, very, very soon. And that's all I got. So, so HQ out. You're not going to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Peace.